Hey guys, let's talk about Explorers of Ixlon. Now this is a set where you know exactly what you're getting. I do like sets like it. It reminds me of the Battle Royale, the deck boxes and the collection boxes. I always felt they were really good value because at the end of the day, there are no surprises, there are no randomness. Everyone gets exactly the same cards. There's a lot of value in this set. And if it goes on sale, this is kind of the product that I feel like would be on 50% off or maybe even more. And let me explain why that would be the case. There's so much product going on, unstable, standard boxes are at the all time low. Uh, a big Star City Games is selling boxes of Ixlon for $70. That puts immense pressure on a supplemental. I, I don't think there's another way you can define this as a product that the majority of Magic players are not interested in. But that being said, it does have some very interesting cards in it. Uh, Time Warp is always very good. Shared, I mean, that card has gone up a ton. I'm still a little shocked to see it at $10. Quick Silver Amulet is always good. Aggravated Assault, Beacon of Immortality, Adapted Automation. So overall, the, the cards they chose were pretty good cards. I don't want to say that they were bad cards. They were relatively okay cards. And the uncommons are not bad too. I believe there's Path to Exile and Lightning Helix in it as well. I like it. I like it because I feel like it's going to go on. It will eventually, maybe Christmas will go on sale, but it's still kind of relatively new. This is the type of product that sits at Kmart forever, and then Kmart eventually puts the 80% off sticker on it. Uh, same with Walmart. Uh, I don't have, you know, right now we live in an environment where Magic cards are the cheapest I've ever seen them, and I've been playing for a long time. Like the MSRP on most of these products does not mean, it doesn't mean anything, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. If you go all the way to Modern Masters 1, where the MSRP was $6.99, but people were charging like $12.99, $15.99 a pack. Uh, now, like these products don't even, including Iconic Masters, obviously, don't even come close to them MSRP. So people be like, oh, well, this product costs this much MSRP. I don't think it really matters because the MSRP is now no longer a good guideline as to what you should be paying for your product. Now, on top of all this interesting information and data and the new environment that we are under, big box stores have lots and lots of holiday sales. Like they just want to get rid of inventory. It is not in their best interest to hold on to it and hope it goes up in price. In the past, a lot of the card prices have been manipulated by distributors, um, people who collect boxes, and they just hoard these boxes in the hopes that these things will go up in price. But that can no longer be the case since there's just too much. There's not only too much of the individual products for the demand, there's too much of all products. The core concept of hey, can you afford everything in Magic is gone. No one can afford everything in Magic now. You have to pick what your favorite format is. Do you want to do standard? Do you want to do modern? You can't pick, I mean, I guess you could pick both, but if you had a bigger budget, but it would be much more difficult. Do you want to do EDH? Do you want to do, uh, I mean, what do you want to do as a core? Uh, essentially, think about it, budget correctly, and you will be fine. One of the interesting parts about Explorers of Ixlon is I don't think this will be the only time they do something like this. I feel like we will have more products in it. And this product screams mass discount a few months later to me. Like, I don't know why people would buy it. And I think there is a lot of value in it. Uh, should you get it at the right price? People's like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, there's still some very good deals. You can still make money from MTG Finance. It's not completely dead. You just have to evolve. And MTG Finance at the very core of it was, it used to be sharking. It used to be, okay, not everyone has a data plan. Let me check the, oh, this card's $10. Okay, this person thinks it's $2. Let me trade it for $2. And you would ask, What's, what do you value this at? What do you value this at? 
What do you value this at? What do you value this at? And that question is no longer a acceptable question because you could say, oh, I value at TCG mid. And you would answer, because if there, it used to be, I mean, this is such a unique thing that a lot of you won't even remember. It used to be people would point at cards they knew that would be misvalued often. And they would say, what individual card do you value this at? Now, no one says that. Sharking is non-existent because unless it's a really new player and that's very crummy because everyone has a phone with a data plan and they know what the value is. They, they value at TCG mids, right? Or whatever standard they hold it to. And instead of trying to make catch a mistake on every single card, you can just say TCG mids and no mistakes will be made. Well, I mean, it would, I guess you could still make a mistake, but it would lessen the ability for you. Uh, it would lessen that ability. Now, why I like Explorers of Ixlon as a side note, and this is not something that most people will tell you, I like that little symbol. I think that symbol is kind of cool. And I do feel like I would rather have a set of Path of Exiles on a set that was not or not widely popular over the original Conflux ones. I just think that symbol is actually kind of good. And you might be like, oh, that has no meaning to the value. I don't know. Like I've seen some of these quote pre-constructed sets, the cards in them just go up, 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 up in price because there's so little of them. Overall, it is quite interesting and I'm not going to lie. I think this set will be worth buying when it's on discount. And I am, I can almost, I will guarantee you this set will be on discount by July. Uh, people, it's not uh, it's not a good size. Um, it's a little too big for many stores, and it's not going to move. Most Magic players are not going to buy this. You're really looking for a person who is interested in board games and does not play Magic. So for the amount that's been printed, I don't know if you can find enough for those people. Anyway, let me know if you agree, you disagree. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.